Hi. <clears throat> Good afternoon. It's May 10th, and it's time for a new on public library board meeting. Uh, we have an agenda in front of us, and uh, hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at it, and I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I will make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. A second. And is there any discussion? Yes, I would like to make one change under uh, num the librarian's report number four, the summer reading program. Our youth services librarian, Jan Kayuni, will present that. And then I would like to add number nine under the librarian's report, and that will be a landscaping update. Okay. With those changes, can we vote on approving the agenda? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, moving on to the minutes from our meeting on April 12th. Do we have a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor of approving those minutes? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> okay, let's move on to our librarian's report. Item one is the Memory Lab project video and update with Chris and Lisa. Gerilyn, I'm going to back up just a second. Can we um, take care of the financial report first? Yes. Okay. Oh, because I skipped it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this is the uh, April 2018 financial report and summary with Chris. Thanks. All right. Thank you. That starts on page six. We're one-third of the way through the year. Our budget is about 31.27% expended. We did pay the first half of our TDS contract fees, and that's reflected in cataloging and processing. We'll be billed in, after August for the second half. We received the annual rent payment from New Ulm Community Access Television, and you see that reflected in meeting room rental under revenues. That's why that number is so high. Under computer supplies and equipment and expenditures, we are purchasing two computers, uh, one for Jan in the youth services uh, office and one for Betty. That's just part of our uh, rotation, and it's their turn to get new computers. So that will be reflected in the next couple of months. And then under audiovisual supplies, we did pay our overdrive annual fee last month, and we have received three of the four reimbursements from the other Brown County libraries. We're just waiting for um, one more, and that will come back. You'll see another slight change in that next month. Um, nothing particularly out of the ordinary, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. You said you're upgrading two of the computers? Right. But how long do they do you run? Four years. About four years? Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Chris concerning the financial statement? Okay, then we'll move on to aforesaid Memory Lab project video. Thank you. I'm going to move to the other computer and show you the video. This was created by New Alm Community Access Television. Uh, we, being Lisa and I, um, had to uh, come up with an introduction of ourselves in our library as part of this grant when we went to Washington, D.C., and we were told be about five minutes, and we could do... Uh, PowerPoint, we didn't need slides, we could have a video, and when we heard the word video, we immediately went to NewCat to see if they would help us out, and so they produced this. Last meeting, we were it was right before we were going to go, we were snowed in for a day, so we missed the first day of the conference, and they showed the video without us. Well, the next morning, we were getting ready in the lobby to leave, and here came some of our uh, other librarians uh, who had been grantees, and they recognized us from the video oh. and <laughs> said that the, the video was a big hit. So big thanks to New Cat. They're excited about this project, as are we. So it's about six minutes. Question, how, how many other people got snowed in? Anybody else? <laughs> Nobody else got snowed in, uh, although they were coming from Florida and <laughs> California and Houston, uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, Kentucky. Um, yeah, we are the only upper Midwest group. We lost it, and I'm going to get it back here. Talk amongst yourselves for a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if 
uh, let's see if I can do this and talk a little bit about it while I'm finding it to show again. Um, our update is we have to uh, work on this project for a year and then sustain it. And so we've written an article uh, for the New Home Journal just to introduce it. Uh, we have um, submitted a, um, an application to speak at the Minnesota Library Association conference about the project, and that would be in October. We should find out next month if uh, Lisa and I are uh, going to be able to do that. Uh, we're also determining which equipment we'll purchase. We're going to have two rounds of purchasing, and the first one will be this summer, and then the next one will be at the end of the year. We hope to have four or five pieces of hardware where we're able to digitize things like VHS and audio cassettes. And one of the questions that we'll be asking the public is uh, what types of material do you have that you can't play anymore? In particular, it's going to be film primarily. Um, so is it beta? We've already heard from some people. Beta max. Um, you know, what else is out there that you aren't able to access? We did have someone come in and talk to us uh, because they had slides. Well, we are already able to help people digitize their slides. And so it's important for people, we, we need to get that word out again that we have that capability. Uh, Lisa will be putting out a call uh, for people to look around uh, for their equipment. We're looking for VHS players. So um, we hope to have kind of a stockpile of those. Uh, and we'll be asking for uh, people to look in their closets and attics and, and help us out with some of that uh, older equipment that they might have. Let's see if this will play now. Welcome to New Ulm, Minnesota, home of Shells, the second oldest family owned. Welcome to New Ulm, Minnesota, home of Shells, the second oldest family-owned brewery in the U.S. The Gog House, childhood home of artist and millions of cats author Wanda Gog. Turner Hall, the oldest bar in Minnesota. Herman the German, who led a group of Germans to victory over a Roman army in 9 AD. And New Ulm Public Library. Come on in. Wiley. I've been at New Ulm Public Library almost nine years. The first five as assistant director and now for the past four as library director. This is actually my third career. First I was in sports journalism and then I was a nurse and decided to go back for my library degree and did that at the University of Iowa. Uh, having all of those careers allowed me to work all over the country so I've been in Connecticut, uh, from Seattle to Georgia and Omaha but I've stayed in New Ulm because I love the work I do and the people I work with and the capacity we have here to make a difference. When I'm not at the library or reading a book or more likely four, I run. I'm active in League of Women Voters. I volunteer at a fair trade shop and I like to get home to see my family in Iowa as often as possible. Lisa Sieve here. I'm the reference librarian at the New Ulm Public Library. I came to library work in a somewhat twisty fashion. Um, my degree is in social work, which it does come in handy sometimes working with the public. I did my work study hours in college paging at the local library. Um, after that, I volunteered at my child's school and paged here somewhat in, uh, for a few hours in the afternoon. Um, the reference librarian position came open, so I took that job. I live on an acreage with my husband, my two adult children, which is a whole nother story, my fearless and brave cat, Maya, and Olive, our super mutt. My commute in the winter is a little bit challenging, but I love living in the country despite that. New Ulm Public Library opened in 1937 with local funding. It took a lot of years and effort to open up a larger library and that happened in 1976. About 13 years ago, uh, we opened up the original library, renovated it, connected it to the 1976 building and now we have 28,000 square feet of space. 
We are a city-owned library, primarily funded by the taxpayers of New Ulm. We also receive a bit of funding from our county. Uh, we are part of a regional library system, so we contract for services with Traverse to Sioux Library System, and they help us with a shared integrated catalog, delivery, and interlibrary loan. We have a nine-member library board that is appointed by the mayor. We also have an active friends organization that helps with advocacy and funding and just getting the word out about the library. We employ 16 people, five of which are full-time, and together we create a community here that uh, everybody has a niche and we're all doing things that we love to do to help the New Ulm community. New Ulm Public Library has 6,400 card holders who checked out more than 150,000 items in 2017. We also have 12 internet workstations and three hotspots that are available for checkout. We're located right in the center of New Ulm, which has a population of about 13,500. Our community has a rich German heritage that is celebrated at many festivals throughout the year. We also are home to a private Lutheran college, Martin Luther College, as well as industries such as 3M and Kraft Heinz. Our circulation desk is integrated, so as well as the normal circulation desk duties, I handle reference questions. Um, I manage the adult nonfiction collection and manage the staff schedule. We started our digitizing process about three years ago with the Fred Johnson collection. Now, Fred Johnson is instrumental in getting this new home library built, a great benefactor to the community. Over the years, and we're talking the early 20th century, he wrote to famous people of the time, and they sent in um, autographed pictures as well as letters. And we've been digitizing those in the past couple of years and posting them on a new website, newalmartcollection.org. We've also identified a project at the New Ulm Fire Department. They're celebrating their 150th anniversary in 2020, and we want to get some of their historic photographs and objects on the website for the public to view. Along with the many individuals who we know will benefit from the Memory Lab, we love to work with certain partners who we absolutely know will love this memory lab, including the German Bohemian Heritage Society, the Brown County Historical Society, the New Ulm Battery, the Junior Pioneers, the Wanagog House Association. We want this memory lab to be a community resource where all of them feel welcome to preserve their history. I hope to have a user-friendly way to help New Ulm residents preserve their memories. New Ulm has a very rich history and strong ties to past generations. They have videotapes and pictures and slides that they want to preserve. We all have a story to share and I just want to help them save theirs. Again, thanks to, to NewCat for that. Uh, we'll be keeping you posted as we work on the project. Uh, and like I said, our next step is to talk more with the public about um, getting equipment. And we will be pr uh, presenting a class on how to organize your stuff. Uh, we talked with uh, librarians at the Library of Congress, and they termed it clumping. So it's a way to start managing all of your things. And we want to help people get started as a way to um, then come back in the fall and digitize those most important pieces that, that they've identified. Mm. I'd be happy to answer any questions. <clears throat> Will you be having classes at the library to, to do the, the training and to teach people how to clump things? Yes. Um, our goal is to teach the classes uh, for how to organize your things and then lead that into classes on how to actually use the digitizing equipment that we'll be purchasing. Do you expect anybody else from the TDS system to take a class? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I've told them about this project, but we haven't talked beyond that. One of my hopes is that Lisa and I can use our colleagues at TDS as guinea pigs for some of our classes. 
you know, it's always good to have that kind of feedback from those who are working on that side of the desk before we roll it out to the public. So not only those at TDS, but uh, in other TDS libraries, but our own library staff. They provide great feedback on how it's going to work before we bring it to the public. And Jan, I logged you out, so, okay. okay. Any other questions for Chris on item number one? Okay, we'll move on to item number two, the Library Department Activities Report and Statistics. And is with Chris. Okay, and that starts on page 19. Uh, Jan was selected to participate in a Train the Trainer program titled Supercharged Story Times for All. And that was a competitive process from uh, people all over the country. So she's in a very select group and she'll be attending weekly online courses and then training 20 other librarians in the area. Uh, she also presented a story time at Park and Rec's Arbor Day celebration on April 27th. She finished the final story time of the spring on April 26th and now she's planning school visits and I think has already started them. I want to again mention that the Avi visit was a great success and, and April turned in the final grant report and so kudos to her for managing that. It was a big project that was a great success. On April 26th, Lisa Sieve, our reference librarian, joined staff from Mankato Area Adult Basic Education at a booth for the KNUJ New Ulm Job Career Fair. She presented library resources and gave uh, participants the opportunity to register for a library card. Uh, as we noted last September when we went out in the community and registered people for library cards, not a lot of people were registering for library cards. She said a lot of them already have cards, which is fantastic. But I think it's another great way to show that uh, the library has resources in all kinds of areas, including a little job resource spot that's uh, near the service center. I attended the League of Minnesota City Safety and Loss Control Workshop on April 11th in Sleepy Eye and found that beneficial. I also attended the Minnesota Library Association's Public Library Division Day, April 13th in Minneapolis, and I co-presented a breakout session on legislative advocacy. A Network New Alm had their annual visit at the library. April gave them a tour. That was on April 25th. And then for the second consecutive year, 3M employees hosted a book drive, donated the items to the city's little free libraries. We now have a new volunteer, Patsy Ryberg, who is specifically going to stock those little free libraries. I'm really happy to have her on board. And she did the first one a week or so ago, and she was out for two hours. So it is a time-intensive project, and we're really happy to have her. And Diane Baranek retired. After more than 30 years as a library aide, her last day was April 30th, and um, she just was um, fantastic at um, doing a lot of the detailed work, whether it was displays or a lot of the processing. So we wish her all the best in her retirement. Thank you, Chris. All right, item number three is programming with April. In your packet, you have the um, attendance figures for the last month or so of programs. Um, I want to point out the attendance for the evening with Avi. Um, our public per, um, <coughs> per, um, presentation by Avi attracted 140 people from the community, um, and we had great success with our other presentations during the day um, where we had MLC students come, and then we had two school presentations. Over the course of the day, he presented to a total of 1,080 people. So we're really pleased with how that day of programming went. Um, I want to thank Martin Luther College, the Friends of the Library, um, the Minnesota Association of Library Friends, the Wanda Gog House, the Southwestern Minnesota Reading Council, and the Library Board for their support of that program. Um, and we also did receive legacy funding for it as well. So. It was a great day of cooperation between all these organizations to bring Avi here. So thank you. Um, uh, going on to upcoming programs, on Saturday, May 12th at 10 a.m., 
Julie Gassman will be visiting the children's room to present Do Not Bring Your Dragon to the Library. She has wrote, written a number of children's books and she'll be reading some of those in a special story time. So we encourage you to join us for that. Um, on Tuesday, May 15th at 6.30 p.m., the Minnesota Valley Civil War Roundtable um, will be meeting. George Romano is presenting War on the Mississippi. Um, this is the last meeting of the roundtable for the summer. Um, they'll resume their meetings for the fall on September 18th. The Needlework Group is meeting on Wednesday, May 16th at 9.30 a.m. They've decided to continue meeting on the first and third Wednesdays during the summer, so we're happy to offer them that space. Um, the Art Group is also meeting on Wednesday, May 16th at 2 p.m., and this will be their last meeting for the summer. They are going to take a break, and they will resume on September 12th. On Tuesday, May 22nd, we, at 6.30 p.m., we have mystery author Christine Husum coming. She'll be speaking about her mystery books and her writing. On Thursday, May 24th at 6.30 p.m., we have a fingernail art class, and that'll be led by our staffer, Leah Bodie. She's fantastic at nail art. Um, if you stop by the library and visit with her, she also often has a really fun design, so we're excited to have her lead that class for us. On Tuesday, May 29th at 6.30 p.m., Dr. Peter Mansour will be presenting Global Hotspots. Um, he'll be discussing Syria, Russia, Iran, and North Korea as well as some other hot spots. Um, he's the director of, he's, I'm sorry, he's the chair of the military history department at Ohio State, and he's also a CNN analyst, so we're, we're very happy to have his expertise with us. On Thursday, May 17th, at 10 a.m., we have the Mankato Symphony Orchestra Woodwind Quintet visiting us for a special musical story time. So we encourage you to bring your children by for that. Um, that is paid with funding from the Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with a grant through the Minnesota State Arts Board. So we thank them for their support of that. And then on Thursday, June 7th at 6.30 p.m., we have um, Buddy Sweeney, New Ulm Transit Entrepreneur with Terry Sweeney. Um, Terry is Buddy's nephew, and he's been researching the history of transportation in New Ulm, as well as his uncle's role in that. And so he'll be presenting his history at the library for us at that program. Does anyone have any programming questions for me? All right, thank you. Thank you, April. Okay, item number four is the summer reading program with Jan. And our summer reading theme is Libraries Rock. So we're trying to do lots of things with rocks. And I love Pete the Cat, so I thought, you know, I'd just have a little thing for you to look at here. We're going to be painting rocks this summer. Um, I tend to go on and on, so I thought if I did it in a PowerPoint, then I'd just, you know, stick with that. So <laughs> we're going to, oh, you got to get the full effect here. We're going to rock around the library. <laughs> Look at David. Not, don't do this, huh? <laughs> you can sing with. <laughs> There's a book for you and a book for me. I'm going to wear this, I think, all summer, and that's why I just got my hair cut really short. Okay, so um, library events. This, this year you're going to be able to register online. This is an experiment. We're going to see how it goes. Um, so the online registration is the same as the park and rec when they sign up for swimming lessons or something. So they're going to use their existing accounts or they can create a new one. Either way, um, our big kickoff, I'm so excited about this. We are going to, can I make that bottom thing go away? Oh well, I don't, I won't worry about it. Um, kind of have a block party that day. We've uh, communicated with both the Brown County Historical Society and the Minnesota Museum, Music Museum, and they have both agreed that if a child comes with their little registration, you know, acknowledgement, that their entire family can get in free that day. So one has, I think, four hours, they're gonna be open, and the other about five. And I am really excited about that. And Dick Kimmel's gonna be playing outside, hopefully, if the weather's nice. So. And the popcorn wagon's going to be out, and the kids will get a little free popcorn. So not so much like in the library as we've done in the past, but we're going to kind of involve that whole block around the library. And I'm, I'm just really excited. I hope that families come out for that. 
Um, once again, they don't have to come that day to register because they can register online. So this is what our little rock and reading chart is going to look like. They can either count the number of books that they've read and put a note for each book, or they can count the minutes they've read depending on their age. And then they would do a, like a quarter note for 15 minutes. Get a little math in there. Everybody's going to get a chain again that says reading rocks. And then every day that they read, they get a little pony bead. The goal of... Um, of the summer reading program is to develop the habit of reading. That's really what we want is that regular reading. Um, we've gotten community support from lots of different businesses that have given us coupons to use, plus the optimists, friends of the library, and, and just some individuals. We're going to have great performances. Trisha and Steve Shaskan are coming. They've written several books and illustrated them as well. And then we have this funk junk drumming group. And that's what they drum on is five gallon pails. And so uh, we've got a stack of them in the library and we're gonna have our own drumming group this summer. So the kids that come to the drumming group are gonna get a drum and they're gonna decorate it with duct tape and they're gonna get a set of sticks. And we're gonna meet, I think about six times, it's in here, the dates. And uh, we're gonna rock on the drums a little bit. So I'm thinking, I don't know if this is, I don't know if I should say this on the microphone or not, but. I'm imagining that all the fests in the future will have little kids drumming with their hat on the side, you know, and they can <laughs> drum up something here in New Orleans. And then we have this Angie Art, Angie's Art, and she does little clay figurines. One other thing that's a little different is we're trying to go with no registration for all our events. So people can just come. I think last year we had two events that we had more people that wanted to come than we could fit in, but it's a lot of work to take the registrations and tell them if they're on the waiting list. So we're going to just try, come, just come, you know, because we also had people that registered and then they didn't come. So um, th that's just what we're going to give it a give it a whirl. And our big end of the year thing is Peter Johnson. He's going to do um, kind of a STEM activity with the science of sound and he and he hands on kids get to make laser beams and things. Um, we're going to have two storytelling times um, a week, Monday mornings and Thursday, or Wednesday mornings. Why does it say Monday and Thursday? That is wrong. It's just Monday at 10 <laughs> and Wednesday at 6.30. During the regular year, we have it on Thursday morning, but the puppet wagon's out on Thursday morning, and I don't want to compete with them. And then I have some special times for daycares as well. Um, there's the decorate the pale one. The rock art group is going to meet several times this summer, and Leah, the nail expert, is going to help us with painting rocks. And that should be fun as well. And then we're going to try something unusual. On Tuesdays at 2, we're going to have our summer stage. If you've been up to the children's room lately, there's a set of couple sets of risers in there, and we're going to make it look like a cool stage, hopefully, and uh, different events. And But the goal was that kids will come and and share their talent there. They'll sing or dance or we have one family where the little girl said, can we do anything? And I said, sure. And I saw her mom a few weeks later. I said, does she have something she wants to do? Oh yeah. She said, the whole family's working on this whole choral reading, reader's theater thing, and they can't wait. And I said, great. So <laughs> we'll have a little talent. And we're also going to do Lego Club on Thursday mornings. And the Optimist gave us a generous donation to help buy more Lego. So I'm glad about that. We just hope lots of kids come and read. Regular things that happen anytime is there's always going to be a name that tune, activity sheets, crafts, scavenger hunt, puzzles, Legos, estimation jar with rocks in it. And then, of course, books, movies, audiobooks. So you don't have to come at a certain time. There's always something good. Wonderful Scott Kadelka with DNR is doing five programs for us this summer, and those are in there too. And then we're really promoting, uh, we have a new thing this year, tween battle of the books in addition to the teen battle of the books. And in those, kids sign up, and they, if they get chosen, then they get four free books. They get them in the early part of the summer, and they have two months to read them. And then on August 4th, they all go to St. Peter, and their team has to answer very specific trivia questions <laughs> about those books. And they even have to write, like spelling has to be correct. It's I went last year, and I'm pretty impressed. So we're going to try the tween and teen this year. And thank you for supporting and promoting our programs because every one of you that when you're out in the community and you talk 
positive about the library, that helps us. Our summer reading program last year had over 800 kids that signed up and over 400 of them received a book for reaching their goal. And we know that reading is the number one act uh, indicator of academic success and it's fun and entertaining. So with that, you all have a little brochure and everything is, should be available online. If people want to look something up, it should all be on our events page. And I uh, forgot I had it on. <laughs> but you know, the library is going to be so packed this summer that I figure I'll need this for people to find the librarian, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the hope. Any questions or ideas, more ideas? I'm always open to that, too. Okay. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you, Jen. Thank it's you. wonderful. You're welcome. Best presentation to the library board ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> this, the storytelling thing started yesterday, and they made it clear that we should just go overboard in our storytelling. Be ridiculous. Be out there. Give it all you got, and that kids will love it, and the parents will, you know, learn like about a tenth of what you're doing, and so you got to do 10 times what you want them to learn, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to go over the top. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right, item number five is our staffing update with Chris. Thank you. We do have, I can't follow up, Jan. It's going to be back <laughs> down to. <laughs> uh, I'll probably lend you the bird hat thing. <laughs> she might, yes. <laughs> Uh, we do have an opening for library aid position. Human Resources is coordinating that uh, replacement, and there is an offer out there. Uh, we'll keep you posted uh, how that process is going. Okay, number six, carpet update. And we've been in contact with Hiller. Uh, we have everything picked out. We're waiting to get a date. Summer reading is coming closer and closer. <laughs> so I don't have a date yet. How long is that going to take, the process once they start? Do you know? I don't know. No. OK. Any other questions about that? All right, number seven, the roof update. You know, I thought I would have things to share. <laughs> <and> I just <laughs> don't because um, they're working on the roof. But I, I talked to Elwood in the last week, and um, they're working on it. Nothing to report. Fair enough. And so we'll ask you about the Brown County Library Board meeting on June 11th, item number eight. I do have something to tell you about that. That's a reminder. The Brown County Library Board meets twice a year in June and November. Uh, this June, it's at Dykeman Free Library in Sleepy Eye. It does rotate between the five county libraries. Typically, the June meeting involves deciding how to divide the money that's allocated by the county. Now, historically, it's been divided evenly between the five public libraries. Carl and I have already chatted. We're going to go over there together. One of the items that will come up is talking uh, about how to approach the county commissioners this August. It's already coming around to budget time, and I met with my colleagues at the other Brown County libraries, and so we'll be approaching the county library board on June 11th, um, giving them some recommendations about how to approach the county commissioners in August. See if we can't all get on the same page again this year. All right, and then item number nine that we added, the landscaping update. And uh, we, have we, we have received a preliminary drawing from Tony Gugisberg uh, for the landscaping area around the Wanda Gog Monument. Uh, the, com the Wanda Gog Sculpture Committee is going to be calling a landscaping meeting. And I don't have uh, the date verified, but I will get that to Holly and Dave uh, uh, as part of the landscape committee. My hope is that th we have a recommendation from that committee for the entire board to um, consider at the June meeting. Have you seen anything on it yet? I have seen it, yes. It's a lot of flowers and it's very colorful and it has a retaining wall. Ooh. Is there a path in it? There's not going to be a path. The, the one that came to us does and I've talked to the committee and said we can't have a path and so they're going to change that. Why can you not have a path? You can't have any kind of 
man-made path because of the ADA. No, no, we're not talking man-made here. What happened? So if somebody wants to go to the benches, they're going to just walk through the flowers? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Or grass or, mm -hmm. you know, something like That's that. That's what I mean. Then. Yes. So you're going to just leave an area in grass or something. Hopefully they'll walk through that area. That will be what's up for discussion. Okay. Yes. Will that change your budget? Will you have to have some kind of a consideration for, like, annual flower purchase? Will these be significant? Do you know? And because I'm not a flower person and I haven't talked to Tony yet, that's one of the questions that I think will need to be asked. How many of these are perennials? What is the maintenance, the ongoing maintenance for it? Mm -hmm. And one more thing on that, Chris. Would that be our, or would that be the, do you want to, Gog, would they be helping on that? The goal of the Wanagog Sculpture Committee is to disband. Ah, okay. So that... Gotcha. Um, they had hoped to have enough money to create a maintenance pool. It doesn't appear that that's going to be the case. Anything else for Chris on this? Okay, then we'll move on to the 2019 budget discussion. And that starts on page 28. I after I sent this, I received preliminary documentation from our finance uh, de department, and we do have to submit the budget approved by the library board by July 13th, which is perfect because that's the day after you meet in July. So it's just a little bit earlier for me to turn things around and get it to uh, Nicole Jorgensen. Some things to consider that are written out here uh, that Several things are determined by the city finance department, most significantly taxes and personal services. We will be um, have an estimated cost savings of $10,000 in part-time personnel costs because of restructuring the library aid position. I did talk to Nicole about whether we can move that $10,000 and use it elsewhere, and the answer is yes. Um, I am expecting a 3 to 5% increase in fees from t TDS. I'm going to budget for 5%. It's likely we won't have a final number from TDS until after our budget is um, required to be submitted. So things to consider uh, when I'm looking through the budget, where have we been coming up short, what are our needs, and contractual maintenance building has been something we've talked about seems like every month there's something that comes up and you can see that we overspent just a little bit last year more in 2016 I think that's just going to continue uh, this year we've we've already had the HVAC um, replacement I don't see that line um, decreasing in fact I see it continuing to increase as the building gets older I think um, special events programming would be a great line to add a little bit of money because we've had great success with programming because it's become part of how people identify the library as a community space and because we anticipate legacy funds continuing to decrease over time. Uh, we, uh, that cost um, needs to be shifted to the library to a certain extent. I would like April to have some flexibility right now. She brings me an idea for a program and I say, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out how to pay for it. Or I tell her, well, we just don't have the money for it. You know, we, it's really, um, every time there's, a, there's an idea, we're, we're trying to scramble to be able to fund it. This would give her some uh, padding to work with so she knows she actually has some money rather than after summer reading we, we realize how much we have left to work with. AV supplies uh, included $8,000 in 2018. 3000 of that uh, went for overdrive. That's about 2000 of our um, costs for the contract plus you allocated a thousand dollars extra for materials and so that's where the three thousand comes from um, i'd like you to consider 
increasing that budget line so that we could purchase some more DVDs and particularly audiobooks on CD. The trend um, is showing that audiobook checkouts, audiobook use around the country is rising. And then all of those increases um, total of $5,500 or 0.7% of the total 2018 budget. If you add in the TDS increase, um, we're up to $7,000, which pretty much takes care of that library aid position. I did add an article, well, it was actually a uh, blog post uh, about um, why you would not uh, perhaps in take away library fines. So I wanted to give you the other side of the coin um, to counter an article I gave you a couple of months ago about why you might want to consider uh, eliminating library fines. Lots to consider. This is just a preliminary meeting. What I was hoping to hear from you, if there's anything that strikes you um, that you want added or considered that I haven't, Next month, I'll come back to you with firm, some firm numbers with the opportunity for you to provide more instruction. I'm hoping we can hammer most of it out before that July meeting because it's due the very next day. The $1,515 for TDS, uh, that's just us. That's just us. That's just us. You plan to go before or talk to Brown County again with any portion of this? I am planning to um, take this to the county library board next month and talk about a strategy for requesting an increase in funding from Brown County. Yes. And the reason I ask that is because this seems to be going up every year. Yes. And TDS is uh, running uh, using funds out of their fund balance. And that's going to continue at this for the foreseeable future. It's not sustainable to run TDS the way it's being run. Um, if they continue taking funds out the way they have been, they're good for another four to five years. And so things have to change. And do we want to lose services or do we want our fees to go up? Uh, next year is a budget year at the state level. State funding hasn't changed in nine years or so. Uh, so we are hopeful that the state will see to giving some more money to the 12 regional library systems. That's not going to change the fact that our fees will continue to increase. Uh, the executive director, Ann Hokinson, said that member fees account for about a third of the TDS budget. The other two thirds come from the state. And those fees have been stagnant for all that, all those years. <clears throat> and Holly, jump in if I'm, uh, I, if you have more to add. I don't want to leave Dave with the impression that TDS isn't doing what they can to cut costs. Right. They no have problem. not hired people or replaced a person. They have reduced the number of square feet they rent for the office and for the cataloging and everything. And most importantly, we've got a new contract coming in this summer to replace our internet costs that's going to dramatically help out. So they have been working on it, even though the state isn't helping in any way, shape, or form by increasing their fees. They are doing what they can to keep it in line. Yeah, My good question point. was not a criticism of TDS. No, I know it, that, but I... It was just... Uh, we're seeing this every year and mm -hmm. and we've got to decide at some point what we're going to do i mean 10 years from now who knows so i mean we've got to continue to have something something built in that okay we're going to be going up five percent two percent one percent whatever it is every year and as we talked about at the director's meeting today these smaller incremental annual increases actually seem to work better for the directors at least who are budgeting than to not increase for several years and then provide you know there's a big increase it's it's harder to absorb that right. than to think about um, it, the personnel costs alone um, 
every year. Well, it's the same with the library staff. You know, libraries are heavily personnel staff, and those are the greatest costs, and they increase annually. Anybody else? Anything else? With the budget, as you were talking about, um, the goal for the Wanagog group is to disband. Would it be something to consider putting a budget for replacing annuals or something like that? It's a great idea. Or, you know, just yeah. for, I mean, I don't know the plans yet for the, the gardening. And then I'm sure there would be people that enjoy gardening that would love to, you know, even volunteer their time to because I'd, I'd be one of those people. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Now that you've said it, it's on film, David. <laughs> <It's> on. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I believe we would be able to put that under contractual maintenance building as well. So we can, as we look at, you know, I recommended 1500 but maybe we look at a little bit more and there are other people who have already volunteered to help with that but that doesn't cover the cost of the actual plantings sure. soil all that um, cost that committee will be able to tell us how much they spent then this year yes correct? how much they will spend yeah. on installing it and yes. then we can we can use that to go forward with them. Yes, and I think Tony Gugesberg will give us a good idea yeah. of the annual yep. maintenance cost of that area. Yep. Chris, you offset those budget adjustments for those line items with the savings that would occur at the elimination of that position. And then there would be a remainder roughly three thousand dollars if everything played out with those numbers that you gave us are you trying to maintain a flat budget from 2018 into 2019 without asking for increase other than what may be offered by the city to employees yeah that's really what i try to do uh it's it's been fairly successful that we've had just incremental increases like you increased programming to from 500 to 3,000 um, I, I really um, have well I've been um, told by the city that not, we shouldn't be asking for anything more than five percent uh, as an increase without some a lot of justification for the need what does that five percent translate to in terms of dollars from the 2018 budget if you add five percent dollars oh, carl i need to get my calculator out here quickly <laughs> talk amongst yourselves again let's see here <laughs> we're at roughly seven hundred ninety thousand dollars for a budget and then you multiply that by um five percent that's thirty nine thousand five hundred dollars Oh, I didn't? You didn't need to do that. That was easy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Math challenged. <laughs> so the 5% we're talking about does not, that's, does not include the personnel salary increases. That, or does it have to? I, I can't, I don't know, but I will find that out. That makes a big difference whether it you does. really got much. Yeah, there. and I don't know. Exactly. So you really can't ask for anything. Like, for instance, if there was some sentiment to reduce or eliminate fines, that's roughly $8,000, as I recall. Mm -hmm. the right. Budget. Um, and uh, I don't know what the the sentiment of the city manager or the council would be to, you know, supplementing that into the budget. And that's, you know, why I ask, you know, in addition to salaries and, and wages, what beyond that can you ask for in terms of an increase comfortably? Well, I certainly can talk to the city manager more about that I haven't talked to him this year the city council is having a work session for department heads in June which is 
uh, something that I could bring up and see what their take on it is. I have a question related to the budget too. Chris, I know that we have two hot spots. Is that what you call? We have three. Three? Mm -hmm. Do we have enough? I'm just concerned about internet for all. Yep. And um, we, I do think we have enough. And you can look on Lisa's monthly report. One of the things that she checks is people calling in to ask for a hot spot and it's not available. We wanted to be able to kind of get an idea on it that. Said six. I was going to ask that same question. It said six times they were not available. Yeah. It's. But I have to be real honest and say that I used to call for one because I wanted to take it with me up yeah. north yep. to our cabin. And um, I stopped calling because I was told no, no, no. So okay. I So I you stopped. don't call anymore? Yep. Okay. Maybe others are, are like that as well. Um, it's. I can check checkouts. I can tell you anecdotally, and maybe April can add to this, that, you know, depending on the day, there's one there, there's two there. Sometimes there's none for a week. It's Are the same people checking them out or different? Yes. Different. The same the people. The same are. people. What is the length of time you can check it out for? A week. A week. And when people call in, we certainly share the information about when it's due back. <clears throat> so then they can time it then they have to wait 20 someone who brings it back has to wait 24 hours before checking it out again okay oh, I see. but in that time you know we've told others over the phone or in person when it's due so it could go out to that person but we do see a small group of people using it over and over again okay can i call in tomorrow and ask for one for august 1st to 7th no we don't place them on hold for anybody. It's first come, first served. Okay. How much is a hot spot? It's thirty-five dollars a month. What does it cost us to purchase another one? It's free to purchase. No, I mean us, I the library, as to if we would to buy one. another one. Right. How much is there there's free? no cost for the library to have the to get the piece. It's thirty-five dollars a month for the service. So you get the actual oh, hot spot oh, at see. no cost. Okay. So we have three of them at hundred and five dollars a month and change okay. mm -hmm. so you're talking a little over four hundred dollars in a year it's 105 a month well, 105 a month 105 35 dollars a week i'm sorry that's right 35 each yeah per month so, uh, i would assume that the data usage is always used to the throttle point is that correct yeah it's 25 gigs and then it throttles down which means it still works but mostly for just basic internet searching and checking your email so is if that something that we could look in to see is that something that they could tell us as to how quickly oh sure it gets throttled oh sure down like if do we have people who are using it within a week they're using that 25 i, mean, we, I have no idea i was just curious we actually spaced it out we changed it so it's okay. about seven a week so okay. it's split over the weeks so okay. that not one person is using it all that makes sense okay yeah We ha I haven't heard complaints about um, the the data. People do tell us they can tell when it throttles down, but they understand that that's the parameter. That's how it works. They're willing to work within those guidelines. So I, I'm certainly not opposed to adding them. It's not difficult from a, a staffing standpoint. Um, I just hear from Fairmont has a lot of them and they're going out all the time and people are waiting for the person to come in to they're waiting actually sitting at a table by the desk <laughs> waiting for the person to bring it back and we don't have that and i don't know if it's because people have become so frustrated that they just give up mm -hmm. i don't know either i'm just concerned with the fact that we want people who want access to that to have it and if the same people are using it mm -hmm. that also makes me feel as if maybe we do need more so that other people can access it as well i don't know though i trust your judgment on it chris yeah. as to whether or not we need more. well april and i can certainly have a conversation about that uh, you know it's uh, another 
So it's What's 100 it's 105 dollars right now for the three per month. Yes. So if you're adding another one, you're going to add 1200 and some bucks. No. Mm. To the bit to it's the budget. It's 35 dollars a month. Or 35 no 35. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So that's 420. 420. So you're up to 15. Over 400 420 dollars. Um, yeah. You're up to 1600. I just wonder if people know they're available, and I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's been publicized a lot. I know that when I mention it to people, people are like, what, the library has those? You're kidding me. And so I think that people, it's more of a word of mouth, potentially, that it's mm -hmm. gotten, because I don't know if it's been written. It was in, a, it was in the was, paper. Was it in the time. paper? Mm -hmm. At least times. once okay. in the paper. We had a... Uh, roll out okay. to advertise it, but we haven't okay. pushed it pushed yeah. it since. Yep. Is there anything on our website that no. talks about it? Maybe that would be the someone who wants to use the computer. I would think they'd look at our computer website more. They'd have to have a hotspot. But they don't have it. internet to do that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then but they're probably in, coming in to use the library. It is in the catalog. If they were to search hotspot in the catalog, it comes up. If you put hotspot on your desk, yeah. right there where people yeah. check out books, they're going to say, oh, what is that? <laughs> and then I think it's, this is a, you know, little note with what it is, I think would be very helpful. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'd be happy to advertise it some more. And as I said, April and I can talk about, you know, whether we, um, whether we want to add one. And that's really a question for you, too. Is that something you want to fund? Mm -hmm. You know, what... What gives if you want to add five hotspots? Because mm -hmm. it does it does add up. Mm -hmm. But those are questions to think about in well, the next one, month. One question I would have on that is: there any way to tell us approximately whom is using these? I mean, is it the same ten people that are using them all the time? Do you follow what I'm saying, yes. or is this? No, I can, yes, yeah. it's the same people. It is the it same. It is the people. same people. Yeah. Okay. I guess I wouldn't be adverse to adding one or two of them as a trial year or two to see, but maybe changing the time consideration from 24 hours to 76 hours or, you know, something different so that someone else has a chance to get in there if they're interested in it, so that the so same person isn't doing it over and over. One day to three day wait between yeah. checkouts. So I take it most, almost always these things are taken out for a week at a time. Somebody doesn't come in and just go out of town and use them for a weekend. Not right. often, once in a while. Once in a while. But no, most, I would say, and April's nodding, most of the time it's for the full week. Okay. So that would, tend to, that would tend to make you believe that somebody is someplace where their internet is spotty at best. Yeah, we, um, I, again, anecdotally, I can tell you that people are using it who do not have any internet mm -hmm. access at yep. their home. Yep. And which goes to Sue's point. There is a divide there in people who do not, simply do not have the access to it. Now, whether that's because they live in the country, where there are some spots that don't have good broadband or whether their um, their circumstances are, are not able to afford it themselves or choose choose not to and just need it for a brief period of time and and they know that the library is a place where they can just get it for what they need occasionally do we know from a city standpoint how many people do not have internet access like is that something that can be found out or is that something that's I, Information's available. I have no idea. I can look into it. It'd be interesting to find out how many that what we're dealing with. If our, our attempt, I mean, I look at it as a purpose. What's our purpose for having these hotspots? Purpose is to give internet access to all of our citizens. So, how many of those citizens don't have them at home, or don't have access, or the capability of having that internet mm -hmm. in their house, or they don't can't afford to do it, or something to that extent? So, what's our? That's going to determine whether or not we need more yeah, in my I can, mind. I can certainly find that out. Keep in mind too that we have Wi-Fi at the library and you'll notice by the statistics it's quite high 
uh, in use. So we know people are connecting to Wi-Fi um, in that way. It's it's just very expensive, mm -hmm. you know. It's for for any household that particular thing is very expensive. Well, that was a good question you brought up because I I've checked on one one time and it was not available. And the simple reason we have a lake cabin, we go up to the the majority of us do not want to use. We don't care if we have it or not when we're up there. But there's one person in the family when he comes wants it. So I think, can he get us for the weekend? No, it was mm -hmm. not available. So we just dropped it and I said, okay, after this, you look into it. And whether he did it or not, again, I mm -hmm. do not know. And it's important for the public and for you to know that these are Verizon um, devices. And so you have to have a Verizon cellular connection. Yep. For example, one of our staff people lives down by Lake Hanska. She can't use it. So there are spots still, even with this, that you would not get internet access. Hmm. You have to have a Verizon cell tower. If we did change the uh, requirement to the resting period between when you can use it and when you can't to 72 hours, for instance, is that a hardship for the staff? Is it difficult? Does it make their job any different or any other in any way? It presents different challenges. The, those who use it regularly would have a hard time adjusting, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, as far as staff maintenance of actually doing it, no. Mm -hmm. Neither would adding several. That wouldn't change the, the workflow. That would be easy to, an easy adjustment. Okay. And you don't feel even adding one or two more and limiting the amount of time you can check it out to, let's say, four days would change much. You think the same group of people would come in after this constantly or not? Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, for I, instance, I, how long were you talking about using it for? A week. I wanted we're to. talking about a week. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm also thinking about the users. Could it be that someone has a research project do? And it's going to take more than a bit to do to do that. I don't I don't know. A week seems pretty standard for yeah. this checkout. There are some places that will do two or three at a time, two or two or three weeks at a time. But um, we went with a week because it seemed reasonable. It was you know it was a just something to try. You know, we were testing it and it seemed to work, so we've kept it. And it doesn't mean we can't change according to what you would like us to do. We'd be able to adjust to just about anything. Mm -hmm. Is this something we'll be addressing again next month? Or? Sounds like I have some research to do. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Otherwise, we'll move on to our action item. Okay, let's do that. We have a resolution number 2018-15, authorizing the creation of a children's room committee. And it reads as such, the library director recommends that the library board authorize the creation of a children's room committee that will evaluate updating the library's children's room. The committee will meet about twice a month for up to six months to establish priorities, focus efforts, and make recommendations to the library board and friends of the New Ulm Public Library Board. The committee's work will be completed by the end of 2018. The committee will include the following individuals, Jan Caveney, Carla Fjeld, Amy Eveslag, Margaret Blomberg, David Wendland, Friends of the Library Board Member, Bridget Gusso, Dinah Spurgeon, Mignon Fraser, Sue Otto, Chris Wiley. A call to the public for volunteers, and I apologize if I erect any names. A call <laughs> to the public for volunteers elicited a significant response from community members and names were randomly drawn, so the committee totals 11 people. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? So move. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, question, is this something that is is to be ongoing or just six to upgrade the thing and then disband or? Yes, and I'm hoping six months. Okay. I'm thrilled that you had to draw. You had so many people call. That's it was wonderful. great, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you anticipate uh, an ability to be complete at the by the end of the year or if something comes up do you anticipate that you'd seek an extension does the 
or are you able to stay within the parameters of what this motion is going to approve? If I understand what I what I'm hoping this motion says is that this is just a committee that can meet. I didn't put any time frame on it. Oh, I thought it said something about the end of two. Oh, it did. The committee's work. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. See, I wrote it, and then I thought. Oh, it said committee's work will be completed by the end of 2018. You're right, Carl. I'm sorry. Um, I guess I would ask for an extension if we really couldn't get that done. Now that doesn't mean the work being completed. The, the actual physical work, it'd be the committee's work in deciding what it's going to look like in the children's room. So the committee will disband by December 31, 2018? Yes. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. So their plans, their ideas that would come to you for approval, all of that would be taken care of by the end of the year. And the actual physical work in the children's room would not be done by the end of the year. Anything else? All right, all those in favor of this motion to signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that is the end of our, unless there's anything else. Is there any other business? Anybody? Then we're done. Thanks. Thank you. Very much. Thank you.